favorite choruses from the olden days. Oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. And I'm telling you, that should be the theme of every believer walking forward in this journey. Make me more like you and less like me. I've been ever aware of that the last many days, becoming more like Jesus. And what a quest it is and what a challenge and a task it is. Because the flesh wants what the flesh wants, and that's never what the Spirit wants. Those two are always in conflict with each other. And the Holy Spirit is always trying to pull us toward Him. Amen? Oh, to be like Thee. Mm. Come in Thy sweetness, come in Thy fullness. Stamp Your own image deep on my heart. Wouldn't it be great if when people look at you, they just see Jesus? The things that you say, the actions that you make, the thoughts that you think, if they would just always resemble Jesus. What a quest. Amen. Well, good evening. It's wonderful to have you global worshipers with us again, live here in Frisco, Texas at the Mayberry Studios for an hour with Jesus. The last two weeks have actually been pre-recorded as Liz and I have been uh, away in San Diego and Honolulu. Those of you that already looked at my shirt and said, oh, he's got a Honolulu shirt on, read it again. It's not Honolulu, it's Honolua. That is a clothing company that is based over there. And I like to buy these kind of shirts from them as they're just a great quality and I enjoy wearing them. I don't have any idea why I just shared that. But uh, glad to be back home and uh, just for a short time. As next weekend, we will be in Lagos, Nigeria for Sunday morning, not this coming weekend, the next weekend. We'll be here for our next uh, Wednesday service, and then we take off the next day to go to Lagos for a Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Wednesday night, possibly Friday night, Sunday morning again, and then wing our way back home to the United States. And I know it's going to be a good trip, probably a difficult trip, but God gives grace at all times for all things. So pray for us. And if you know anybody or if you're watching in the nation of Nigeria or points surrounding, come and join us. You can find out more on our website, newglory.org. And also Nathaniel Bassey over there, if you're familiar with him, you can look on his social media and find out all about the Hallelujah celebration that's taking place right now. And then they will have their uh, closing services with me and several others uh, next weekend, the 24th and 25th of Fe February. All right? I think I got that right. If you haven't been to the website lately... Uh, take a trip over there and see what's going on. Kim informed me we've had three new Glory Partners sign up already in February, and that makes me happy that you're standing with us and supporting us so that we can take His presence to the ends of the earth. And believe me, I've been to a lot of places around the world. Sometimes they certainly would qualify in my own heart as the ends of the earth, as they've been... Uh, Pretty challenging, but you know what? People are hungry for God and His presence everywhere. So we're so excited about the opportunities. Thankful for health in our bodies that we can go and do this work for the, for the King, for our Lord and Savior, the one who is worthy of all praise and all worship and all honor and all blessing and all glory and all dominion and wisdom and strength and power forever. Praise the Lord. All right. Anyway, we had a good time ministering in San Diego. Wonderful service there. Wonderful service with my friend John Rogers, who is my Hawaiian pastor. I, I grow more fond of him every time I hang around him. He and Pat are precious, committed, sold-out people to the kingdom. 
And it's just wonderful to fellowship with them and others like them. Okay. Uh, I think that's probably about it for now. Haven't sung this one, this old song, for many, many months. drop of rain that falls a flower grows I believe that somewhere in the darkest night a candle glows I believe for 
my sins. Do you still believe that if you do believe that, you will inherit eternal life and forgiveness of all of your sins? I believe that. powerful tune written so many years ago I've wanted to record that um, and have tried to record that on three different albums I may have shared this with you before but that second verse is one that I wrote not the original author and it's our belief that it is owned by people of the Jewish faith who do not accept Christ as the Messiah. So they have never released that copyright to us so that we can record it. And I refuse to record it without the Jesus verse on there because to me, what's the point? You've got to have a Savior. And oh, that our Jewish friends who have not seen that light will have a revelation of the true Messiah. They're still looking for him, but he's already come. His name is Jesus. And how wonderful for those, those of the Jewish faith who have put their trust in Jesus and received and accepted him as their Savior. Liz and I always think about listening to uh, Dennis Prager, who is a wonderful, incredibly brilliant Jewish man who's got everything down with the Old Testament but can't accept Jesus. And I know he's heard that over and over and over again. But you never know. You never know what these last days will bring. So pray for those that have not had the revelation yet. All right? Praise the Lord. <laughs>
what a wonder he is. Praise the Lord. Amen. So glad you're here tonight worshiping with us. Pray that the Lord touches you right where you are. You know what? People are tuning into this meeting. Some of you have heavy hearts tonight because of one type of a burden or another that has just really come upon you. Now, Liz and I got some, some news a bit ago, just, just a little bit ago, that laid very heavy on our own hearts. So others of you are coming into uh, a great time of rejoicing because of some wonderful answer to prayer or perhaps a healing in your body or something else that's just been great news. And uh, we all meet at the cross, don't we? We meet at the cross to say, thank you, Lord. We meet at the cross to say, help us, Lord. <laughs> and that's a wonderful place to meet. Praise, praise the Lord. He's such a wonderful, beautiful Savior.
my voice
feel Jesus in this place. I hope you feel him in your place tonight. If you brought your Bibles and you want to read along with me, turn to 2 Timothy, the fourth and last chapter. Second Timothy 4 from the English Standard Version. This is, uh, this is Paul's letter to his friend Timothy, his protege, you might say. And this is near the end of Paul's life. There's not much time left. And you really can pick up on that as you read these verses. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom preach the word, and be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience. <laughs> And teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but have itching ears they will accumulate for themselves to teach they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, and fulfill your ministry. Now in verse 6 he says, For I am re already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. And I think he's really thinking his departure from the earth. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Now here's what I want to focus on just for a couple minutes tonight. Do your best to come to me soon. It's calling for those who have served with him in ministry, who have assisted him, who have walked and supported him, he wants to see them again before his life ends. Then he says, For Demas, in love with this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Luke alone is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is very useful to me for ministry. Tychicus I have sent to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, also the books, and above all the parchments. 
Alexander the coppersmith did me great harm. The Lord will repay him according to his deeds. Beware of him yourself, for, be, for he strongly opposed our message. At my first defense, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted me. May it not be charged against them. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me, so that through the message, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. A couple things. First of all, we canonize these biblical characters so much as if they weren't just like us, and they were. Now, Paul, amazing man that wrote so much of the New Testament, but earlier in his ministry, Mark, you know, the guy that wrote the book of Mark, all right, he and Barnabas were with Paul. And Paul and Mark did not get along, and they split up, which made Barnabas upset because he was related to John Mark. John Mark, by the way, not just Mark. Mark is his surname. So how, how unique that here these guys are preaching the gospel and they've got some little tiff going on inside of them and Mark just says, I'm leaving this and going back. Which really ticked Paul off. And he and Barnabas then got into it because Barnabas was offended that his relative was no longer a part of the ministry team. I, I've lived this in my own life. I've seen this all around in today. These people are like us, okay? Then you have the interesting guy, Demas. Demas was most likely from Thessalonica and was pretty well off. And now he's with Paul. He is assisting Paul all through his journey and Paul thinks so highly and dearly of him. I don't know if he was adding finances to Paul's journey or not. Doesn't specify that. Could have been if he was of well, well off with his means. But now Paul says, Demas, in love with this present world. Now, I don't know if Demas was with Paul when he was shipwrecked on the island of Malta. You know that during that season, I don't know how long that was, but Paul had a healing line and every single person he prayed for on the island of Malta was healed. Now, if Demas was with him and seeing that, does that blow you away? It blows me away. Because now he says, he's in love with this present world and has deserted me. Another translation says he has betrayed me and left and gone back. But then he says, Luke is here, but get Mark and bring him with you. Mark, the guy that he and I had this big falling out. Well, Mark's an evangelist. I need him to complete this journey. He'll be very effective here. Isn't that crazy? So I'm saying all this to say this. It's important that you and I finish well. And it's going to be more difficult to finish well in this era of time, I think, than it ever has been in the history of the world. With everything that's coming down the pike, here in our own land, who knows what this election year is going to bring? I'm not even going to talk about that tonight. Uh... But are we going to be one who goes back to where we came from and doesn't believe anymore? Or are we going to be one that was off in the distance, we got mad and we were back on the back shelf for a while, but now we're being awakened and coming back and saying, I want to be effective and useful in these last days. 
I don't want to be a Demas. I wish I knew more about him. All I know is he was in the inner circle with Paul. And at some point, something in him said, enough of this. Let's go back where it's easy. Thessalonica was a rich, rich city. He's going back where, the, where, where it flows like milk and honey, where he could have position over there and, and honor instead of being caught up in all this turmoil and persecution and the things that Paul was going through from city to city. His people hated Paul because he was preaching the truth. Have you noticed a semblance with today? The more you hear truth preached, the more the media wants to steer away from that and create a different truth that's actually a lie. You see it in politics. You see it in the marketplace. <laughs> you see it in every scam every single day on social media, which is becoming ridiculous. How many ways are being created to rob from honest people? I'm sick of it. It's terrible. Yet the enemy has plenty of help down here and more and more creative ways are being created every single day to steal from you to steal your identity to try to trick you into giving money to something that's not real and i mean you you can't hardly tell the right from the wrong that's why we've got to stay close to jesus stay close to the truth of his word it's not going to be enough in the last days to just know about the Bible, know about Jesus. You and I have got to know him in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his sufferings. Friends, there's no shortcuts. There are people even right now in Christian circles that are just leaving. There are other ministries that are preaching false doctrines. And it looks and sounds so good because we just read about it. Itching ears. Don't give me any more hard stuff. Life is hard enough. Give me something that tells me how blessed I am, how great it's going to be. I love those messages, but we have to have the whole gospel preached. And in this world, we're going to have more and more tribulation. But thank God that Jesus has overcome the world. How are you going to finish this race? Some of you are battling uh, sickness, great pain in your bodies. I had an email from, from an old friend just last week. Just listening to them talk about the pain that they are enduring in their body. It just hurt me because they're wonderful. They're, they're just great, great servants. But keep our faith strong, Lord, because we can't go by feeling in this day and age. Good gracious, no. You've got to walk the walk of faith. Without faith, you can't, first of all, even please the Father. So how are you going to be an effective light and salt on this planet? What are you going to do to leave some kind of a deposit with the waitress at the restaurant so that when she goes away from your table, Something's changed in her heart. And there's a spark of the love of Christ that starts to just take root in her soul. So many ways we can affect the world that we live in. I need to wrap this up. Praise God. It's been a joy to just be together again tonight for a few minutes for an hour with the lover of our souls. And I do. I just pray that you and I, I pray this for myself. Lord, I don't want to just squeak by the finish line. I want to be an effective force with the gifts that you've put in me during my golden years if you allow me to live that long. And I'm getting there quickly. But we've got to be effective, every one of us. We can't point to somebody else and say, well, that's not really me, who I am. You're called to be that salt and that light. 
You're called to be an agent of change to somebody's life in your circle. And the Holy Spirit, he's here to empower us to do that very thing. I want to get into 1 Corinthians 12 soon and talk about the different things. Liz and I were just talking about this last night. The different giftings that are available through the Holy Spirit. We need those things in 2024. We can't just accept the status quo and just go on. We need those gifts operating in and through us to touch and impact this world. Maybe we'll get into that a little bit next week. Hey, the website is newglory.org, all right? I hope you'll visit there. If you'd want to make a donation, we would certainly welcome that. But more than anything, keep your eyes on Jesus. Pray, pray for us as we prepare to go to Nigeria. We'll be with you next week, and then we'll have a pre-recorded session the week after that. So I don't do any reruns. I always get in front of the camera and lay down a fresh program that I believe will bless you and be effective and timely in your life for that week. But next week we'll be live right here with an hour with Jesus. All right? Thanks so much. God bless you. We love you. Until we see you again, either here or there or in the air. Hey, if you're watching, well, I got to go. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>